Are you ready for the show? Let's go. Starring Greg from My Weight Loss Life. Starring Ryan from Wicko's Carnivore. Starring Aaron from Brewing Better Living. Welcome to the Low Carb Lounge. Grab a drink and pull up a chair. It's showtime. Welcome to the Low Carb Lounge. How's everybody doing tonight? How are you doing, Aaron? Eh, good. <laughs> Can't complain, huh? <laughs> There's always something to complain about, but I'm going to try not to tonight. There you go. How about you, Brian? How are you doing? I'm doing good. How is everyone doing out there? Say hi in the uh, chat and don't forget to hit the like button. Share this with your friends. Definitely. That's one of those things that uh, is always nice. I'll put this up here. Yeah, smash the like button. That's right. Awesome. All righty. Well, I just want to welcome everybody once again. And, uh, you know, if you haven't been to the show before, uh, you're in for a treat tonight. Should be a great show. We got a great guest on. And uh, uh, looking forward to having her on. That's Coach Nicole later. She'll be joining us. But uh, I also want to thank Alia from last week. Uh, she joined us on the show. And I just want to remind people, if you missed that episode, you can go to any one of our channels uh, live tab and click on that and you should be able to see that uh, episode. So uh, that was a great show last week and it was a lot of fun having Alia on. So make sure you check that out in case you missed it already. But uh, so, Aaron, how's how's the weather this week compared to last week where you're well, at? It's like the great spring thaw here. I mean, we went from, what, 20 degrees, like upper teens, and today it was 50, and uh, there's no snow, and it's muddy and foggy, and hello, New Jersey. That's basically it. <laughs> That's the weather here. It'll be it's... 10 degrees next week for sure. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit warmer, I bet, than last week. Last week was cold yeah. everywhere, it seemed like. <laughs> How, how about you, Brian? So early in the week, it was still pretty cold, but uh, today was around 70. Tomorrow's supposed to be in the mid 70s. So it's looking what? nice for at least a couple days here. It's 70 degrees? Yeah. You're only like oh. three hours from me. That's like, I, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it was warmer. I don't know. Virginia, I'm telling you, come, come down to Virginia. We have great weather. <laughs> I don't most pay all those extra taxes that you pay. <laughs> not that i don't pay enough here but anyway <laughs> hey i just want to remind everyone where are you from go ahead and put it in the comments we always like to see that i know we get people from all over the world on this show and it's pretty cool to see that so make sure you put that in the comments share it we'll uh go ahead and put a few of these comments up here too while we're at it um let's see hello keto simple good evening Looks like you're doing a little bit of uh, cooking while you're listening. That's awesome. <laughs> and we got some more. Hello. How's it going? And hello, William. Nice to see you in here. Hello, Brad. How's it going tonight? You know, I didn't really tell you guys, but the weather here has been actually in the 30s all week, but it's been kind of rainy, cloudy. Uh, but I'm not complaining. After the previous two weeks when it was super cold, that was not yeah. fun. Is that That's, a heat wave for you there, 30 degrees? It, it really kind of is for this time <laughs> of year. So That's what I was thinking. Like, that's a yeah, heat wave, right? That's <laughs> like, here, so. there now. <laughs> Hello, Johnny. How you doing? 
And we got some more here. Kentucky, zero degrees one day at 60 the next. Yeah. Here we go, really. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, that sounds pretty good. Definitely. All righty. Yeah. Keto Simples, Indiana there, Indianapolis. Cool. Gianni, I see he's from Concord, North Carolina. That's <laughs> awesome. Hello, Lindy. How are you? Welcome to the show. Hi, Robin. Yeah, hi, Robin from California. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's definitely, it kind of sounds like there's a lot of fog going on right now. I think you have the same weather as we do here. Yeah, now. pretty much. It's the way it's sounding. Right <laughs> definitely. So yeah. like I said, if you could smash the like button, that would be great. And then also go ahead and put in the comments where you're from. We'd like to see that. And uh, so Br Brian, we'll start with you. What are you drinking tonight? Anything exciting? Not anything exciting. Just my plain old water and my trusty um insulated water bottle so it keeps it cool all day cool and refreshing right yep. <laughs> how about you aaron i am keeping it simple here tonight this is black coffee but it is decaf because it's late um i'm drinking that pete's decaf coffee that i really like they use that swiss uh water method of decaffeinating the beans so it's like non no chemicals involved or solvents so it's really good it tastes like it does not taste like decaf coffee it's really good. <laughs> nice. No, that's great. I've got just some regular old ice water. I need, you know, I one thing I've discovered, guys, lately, I have not been drinking that much water. And I think that's yeah. why maybe the scale hasn't been as friendly to me as far as dropping weight goes. Um, you know, you got to drink the water. And I, I, you know, I preached about that. And then here I am breaking my own rules and not drinking enough water. So <laughs> I'm sure there's people guilty. It's easy to grab your guilty plug that you drink back of your the water like you should be drinking. I'm kind of wondering if my internet isn't going to be bad tonight. Hopefully we don't. You just kind of, uh, I thought maybe it was me, but I don't think so. No, I think it's me. Yeah, I noticed okay. it too. I noticed it too. I was like, is something so, wrong? <laughs> sometime during the live, you lose me. I'll be back. Okay. <laughs> I was wondering earlier, so let's see here. Let's get a couple things up here. Pencil talking. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Hot Sydney. There you go. Welcome. Okay, so 40 degrees Celsius. How much? That's like what here? Uh, <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> it's really hot, right? <laughs> yes, it is. Susan. Hi, Susan. So, Greg, real quick, that, that comment from Peter, where is FFG, former fat girl, the, Nicole? She'll oh. be on in a little bit. So she's yep. not here yet, but she'll be on in a little bit. Yep. All right. Yep, she'll be on here in just a little bit here. I did see this earlier. Thank you, whoever. I think it, I'm not sure. It might have been when I joined Nicole's channel, so... That's what that is. I'm pretty sure, but I'm not for sure. It just showed up and I'll, I'll put it up there anyway. So thank you to all the members that are on here and contributing. We appreciate you. And uh, that's awesome. So guys, what kind of week are you having? Uh, why don't you uh, talk about that a little bit, Aaron? What kind of week are you having? Well, people in the audience, let's just say I have a 17-year-old teenage daughter. So it's always something. It was illness and injury this week and missing sporting events and, you know, all that fun stuff that comes along with having a teenager. And one day I'll miss it, right? Yeah. She, she's awesome. Don't get me wrong. But man, oh, man, what a week. <laughs> <laughs> that that happens sometimes. That's for sure. I think Brian, Brian can speak to that, too, I'm sure. Uh, especially having three kids and I have the same for me. And yeah. It's quiet around here now, I must say. <laughs> Do you miss it? Some days. I miss more when the kids are little, you know. Uh, it just brings back a lot of memories when you see photos and videos. I can't and look at the photos. I'll tear up. <laughs> yeah, it works that way. Even as a dad, it works that way, you know. You, you definitely miss your kids and, you know, for sure. 
How about you, Brian? What do you got going on this week? Anything exciting going on in your life? Mm, um, so my mother-in-law's birthday was yesterday. Um, so we celebrated that and uh, we went to Texas Roadhouse. So remember, remember how it was like a week or so ago, I, I told the story about going to Texas Roadhouse and doing the salad thing with just the egg and cheese. Post. So last night I did the same thing. They actually gave me two bowls this time, but yeah. this, this waitress was not even phased. Like she didn't even give me a weird look or anything. And it wasn't the no, same it was one. Completely, it wasn't the same waitress. No. They must was, have, your picture is hanging in the back of that restaurant and they're like, yeah, probably. <laughs> give him what he wants. <laughs> but yeah, it worked out great. So yeah. That, that that's really the only thing that's been going on, I guess, this week, you know. Um, Thank you, other Aaron. Anything else? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I you know, other than I kind of enjoying the the balmy weather for North Iowa, I guess you could say. Uh, I wish it was sunny, but you know, I'll take it because oh. you know the previous two weeks we froze, so it's kind of hey, nice. You to... know what? We're we're soon going to be complaining that it's too hot. So. Oh it's... yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe we're almost to February 1st. I don't know. January to me went really fast. So I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, there's not too much going on in my life, I guess. Just been working and uh, I don't know. That's about it, I guess. I <laughs> not, Nothing too exciting going on. I've been, I still take care of my mom, obviously. I kind of talk about that a lot on my channel. So I run over there after work usually and, and do a few chores around her place. So, uh, but she's hanging in there doing all right. So I can't complain. So 32 ounce steak. Yeah. Big steak. Oh my that, God. That's a nice one. You know that's a nice one. Is that leftovers? That, that's yeah, huge. That's, that Ooh. is a lot. Yeah. Okay. So about the salad thing. All right. So when you go to Texas <laughs> Roadhouse, um, so they give you like a salad, right? Like if, if you order a salad and there's like lettuce, mm -hmm. tomato, crouton, salad dressing, well, there's also egg and cheese in it. So what I've been doing is I order, well, all right. So I, or, I order a steak, for instance, right? So I got this, I got mm -hmm. the 16 ounce um, ribeye, medium rare. And then they say, okay, you get two sides with that. So I said, okay, for my first side, I want to do the salad, but I only want the cheese and the egg from the salad. So I don't want the salad dressing, the lettuce, any of that kind of stuff. I just want cheese and egg. And she said, okay. You get a second side and i said for the second side i just want to do the same thing again um so essentially you get a bowl a bowl which is <laughs> at least the size of the salad bowl it might even be bigger that is filled with egg and cheese in my case i got two sides of it so i actually got two bowls <laughs> that were filled with that so while everybody was eating the rolls and their salad and whatever appetizer they got i had um egg and cheese and then when the meal came you know i, I got my, I had my steak everybody else had their you know potatoes and whatever sides they had with it and i just ate my steak because i already ate the egg and cheese and especially with getting two bowls of egg and cheese it, you know that and then the 16 ounce steak it's pretty filling i i, I was pretty good sounds pretty good after it sounds yeah. like a lot of cheese looked like a lot of cheese like they could have just given you the block just bring there, out the block. It, there is a lot of cheese and that is kind of like one concern because too much cheese might kind might of not feel that good later. Have issues. <laughs> yeah. So I, I didn't, I did leave a little bit of cheese just because I didn't want to go with too much cheese, but that's the other thing. Like if I do that, I try not to eat cheese at least for the next few days because too yeah. much cheese and I start bloating up a little bit and stuff like that. So you gotta be a little careful with the cheese, but. Brian, where did you share that picture at? Was that on your YouTube channel or was that on Instagram? Um, it's, I think it's on both, but it's on okay. the YouTube channel. Um, there should be a post under my channel where it has a picture of the steak and both the both bowls of the uh, cheese and um, whatever you want to call it, cheese and egg yeah. salad. Cheese salad. So, <laughs> yeah. I noticed somebody commented that that's not a salad, but... It is. It's really? just part of the salad. Some random person. Yeah, <laughs> but it is. I mean, it, it literally comes in their salad. It's just that I didn't, I I didn't want certain ingredients that are in the salad. Right. I only wanted the egg and the cheese. 
what's the <laughs> definition of salad? It, I don't think it necessarily means veggies. It, it's like a mixture or I think. Uh, I don't I don't know. Know. No, let's look it up. <laughs> well, there's a thing. There's a uh, such thing as taco salad, right? So true. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. It oh, looked good, thank though. Thank you. You know what? I've had the, that's interesting you say that because um, I was 100% sure I was subscribed to somebody. And then I went on her channel the other day and I was not subscribed. And I was like, I think they're booting people off. I I've seen it happen a few times. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Definitely. I've heard that before from people. So I think that sometimes really something weird. glitches yeah. or something and, was, and you lose the subscription. It was definitely yeah. somebody that I watched and had subscribed to, too. So. Yep. Well, guys, I think it's time to move to our next segment of our show. And it's a very popular thing on the low carb lounge. And uh, let's let's go ahead and get started in this. It should be a lot of fun, but let's go. Welcome to Lounge Lizard Trivia, where you too can be the smartest person in the room. <laughs> All right. Who's going to be the smartest person in the room tonight? It's not going to be me. <laughs> well, it should be. I have the answers. <laughs> you really know the answers to the questions, so that's really not fair. <laughs> you win. <laughs> Okay, well, just so everybody knows how this works, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a trivia question, and you put the answer in the comments. Brian and Aaron have not seen the answer, so they will comment too, and we'll just see uh, how everybody does. Um, so this one sounds, the first question sounds similar to last week, but it is a little bit different, so don't get confused, okay? And here's our first question of the night. What is the most consumed meat in the world? Last week it was the United States. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. I, I guess hey, that's considered a meat, right? <laughs> oh, I didn't even think of that. Is it a trick question? Is it going to be the same as last? Week? No trick questions. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look it up at home either. <laughs> Good answer. I don't know. Once again, I'll repeat the question for everybody, and then I'll be getting to the answer here pretty quick. What is the most consumed meat in the world? Go ahead and get your answers in. We've seen quite a few guesses here. Some chicken, pork, lamb, um, beef. <laughs> Nope. Well, the prize is that you're the smartest person in the room if you get it right. <laughs> and you may tie with someone else. Yeah, there you go. So, all right. Let's get to the answer here. Once again, what is the most consumed meat in the world? The answer is pork. Oh, wow. Yep, wow. it is pork. So, Yep. In the United States, I think, what was the answer last week for that one? Was it, ch was it, it was chicken. chicken? Chicken, I think. Chicken, right? yeah. Well, I think so, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So definitely got that. Yeah, there's definitely some fish guesses were coming yeah, in. That's what I thought, fish. For yep. sure. All right, guys. Here, let's get to the next question. This is a little bit different. What is the process of preserving meat by salting, dyeing, or smoking? Once again, what is the process of preserving meat by salting, dyeing, dry, I'm sorry, drying or smoking? Go ahead and put your answers in the comments. I'm having yeah, such just, a brain fart right now. I feel like I should know this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not looking at the answers. Um, Hey, I just want to welcome anybody that's joining us on a podcast tonight. Uh, just play along, keep some notes, just kind of some fun trivia because this this does get broadcasted on podcasts. So let's see here. Oh, that's from the last one, I think, here. So we got dry aging, dehydrating, salting, salting, oh. cured. I'll repeat the question again. Yeah, um, I think that that's. 
Yep. What is the process of preserving meat by salting, drying, or smoking? Hmm. I think there's like a couple of answers that make sense to me. Susan likes one. Brian's answer. <laughs> yeah, I think Brad has it and William. Cure, oh. curing. Yeah. Curing. It took a little bit for people to get to answering it, but uh, it's looking pretty good. I'll go ahead and cover it here. What is the process of preserving meat by salting, drying, or smoking? The answer is curing. Very good. Very All right, good. guys. Got another one for you. And what is the process? It's another process question. It brings out some of your uh, chef abilities here. What is the process of cooking meat slowly at a low temperature for a long time? What is the answer to that one? Oh, oh, um. Hello, Renee. Mm -hmm. Hello, Charger Mopar. How you doing? Once again, I'll go back to the question here. Um, maybe. <laughs> let's see here. Oh, let's see. Once again, what is the process of cooking meat slowly at a low temperature for a long time? We got slow cook. We got braising. We've got uh, stewing. We got a couple hellos in there. I'll put these up because we definitely have a few members here of channels. Thank you for supporting the memberships of all the people that are on the show tonight. We appreciate that. Once again, I'll go to the question, then I'll go ahead and cover the answer. What is the process of cooking meat slowly at a low temperature for a long time? The answer is braising. Ooh. So... Very good for those who knew the answer. That wasn't, those aren't easy ones, especially when, you know, we talk about meat and it's like, well, now we're talking about a process and preparing. <laughs> and so, and I think I do have one more bonus question. We'll go ahead and do that one. And then it won't be long. We'll bring it, be bringing our guests on here pretty soon. But uh, there's a couple more mm -hmm. guests the simmering, saute, sous vide. Or yeah. Sous -vide. Yes. Yep. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now this one, you, there's uh, the bonus trivia question. What are the top five most consumed foods in the United States? Can they be beverages too? Or are we talking strictly food? food? Keep food. Let's yeah. Keep oh, food. it could be a, I guess one of them could be a beverage. Uh, definitely the type of product. So. Uh -huh. So once hmm. again, what are the top five most consumed foods in the United States? And there is five of them. So you have to get a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> I thought that's a tough question. I thought the other questions were tough. Man. Give, give, you, give, give you a hint. Stuff. Think of last week uh, and what, what was the most consumed food in the United States? We talked okay. about earlier. Okay, yeah. That's the first one. <laughs> I'll give you guys a hint. I want to say bread and cheese. I'm only giving you two. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Well, that's not a bad guess. <laughs> I'm going to guess that a lot of them are things that a lot of people here probably don't eat. <laughs> uh, I'd say three of the f uh, five are probably. <laughs> that we do eat or don't? We, we do eat. Mm. Depends on your plan. I don't think iguana though, Rick. Sorry. Chocolate. No, chocolate is not one of them. Hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't even think that. Potatoes, corn, yeah. Pizza, burgers, <laughs> hot dogs, chicken, cereal. That's not too bad. <clears throat> I got had to you guys had to put your thinking caps on for this one tonight, didn't you? <laughs> Donuts, Pop Tarts, <laughs> Snickers. 
farce. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and ribeyes. At least you had ribeyes on there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, ribeye, it's fine. Well, here it is, guys. What are the top five most consumed foods in the USA? And your answer is chicken, beef, potatoes, dairy products, and bread. Mm. Okay. The three that most of us consume are probably the chicken, the beef, and the dairy products, I would say. Uh, See, I went some... really specific. Like I said, fried chicken. Yeah, fried I would think it's burgers, had like dairy chips. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was that's why it was the bonus question. It's a little tougher. <laughs> so, yeah. For sure. Let's see. <laughs> I like these answers. Yeah, there's some funny ones here for sure. <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> so, Brad, yeah. Yeah, that's not a surprise, is it? Hey, guys, I got a question for you. Are are you hearing an echo when I talk? Mm -mm. No? Okay, I'm not. It must be something on my end. Okay, cool. <laughs> Make sure you clean out your ears. <laughs> Maybe Chef to see did I, did I have the channel open on something and I don't. It's weird. That's funny. All right. I just was going to say, um, why don't, uh, Aaron, do you have a little, I'm going to share a clip of yours, if that's okay. And then we'll let you talk a little bit about it. So let's get into that a little bit. And Women are so afraid that they're going to bulk up and they're going to like look like Hulk Hogan or something. Like it's not happening. Do you know how many years it took that man to look that way? He didn't go into the gym for three months and come out looking that way. And as a woman, you certainly aren't going into the gym and looking that way in three months. It's just not going to happen. It's not possible. We, we don't have that. But I'll tell you what can happen. You can start lifting weights and in a couple of months, you're going to be like, whoa, I look like a lot different than I did. I think I like what I'm seeing here. You know? <laughs> yeah, I've been seeing this stuff a lot. And there's so much more out there about how important it is for women to lift weights for longevity and just to be strong as you get older and to fight off disease and so many things. And I even had... My husband even said to me back a while ago when I started weightlifting, something about how women are supposed to lift light weights at, um, at more um, reps uh, so that they don't bulk up. And I'm like, that's not true. <laughs> You know, and but you still see so many ladies afraid of that. And I just want to like, get that out there that please, please don't be afraid. That's not going to happen. You're not going to look like a man. It's it's only going to going to help you. So just please don't be afraid of that. That's all. And that's why I did that funny thing on uh, Insta. So <laughs> yeah, that was great. No, it was great to share that for sure. So all right, Brian, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I completely agree with that. You're um, you're gonna bulk up and look like a dude. No, <laughs> no, no. Um, I mean, realistically, the the best type of workout, even for losing fat, if you just want to talk about that, is trying to do the most extreme you can do. So the heavier weight that you can do, the heaviest weight that you can do. Um, and it's the same thing, like there's that, it kind of goes along the analogy where for so long they were talking about cardio is the best thing to do. And it's not, it's high intensity that is the best thing to do. So I completely yeah, I, agree with that. I have to say too, and I had done a lot, another blurb about it because I was a runner and I am seeing so, my improvements doing the weightlifting without the cardio are so much better than when I ran. Like my, my metabolism is great. Like it's just completely different. And I'm like, why didn't I know this? Like, why was I spending hours running when I could have worked out for 30 minutes and called it a day, like lifting weights. So really it's a, it's a game changer, men and women, but ladies, please don't be afraid. <laughs> so. I like that sound advice for sure. Well, I think we're ready for our guest to come on and I, I think she's ready to go and we'll bring her on here in a second. I just was going to share a couple comments here. It's, <laughs> Hi, Gail. How are you? Jersey girls. I like that. Aaron, Nicole. That's awesome. All right. All right. Well, let's welcome our guest to the show. 
Let's give it up for Coach Nicole. I said she was going to do that. What kind of I intro was that? Now. Why am I so big? But that was, that, was an awesome, that was an awesome intro. Who was that because voice? Because you're powerlifting, Nicole, and you're you're big now. Like everybody says, women bulk up. That is, that is true. But who was that woman's voice? Was, well, Greg, was that you? Uh, yeah, it is, actually. You want me to play it again? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> <laughs> all right sorry guys i'm having a little technical difficulty here am i gonna stay big the entire time all kinds of problems here. <laughs> she's hiding <laughs> is that better <laughs> you feel better now a little bit <laughs> that's so funny it's funny brad seeing he liked the sardines i should open that can up i think but <laughs> oh <laughs> All right. Um, you know, that kind of reminds me, you know, Nicole, the last time the the three the four of us got together, we had an interesting uh show on the low card football party, and we thought, you know, why not reminisce in those old times? Are you and gonna know? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna share. I got a little uh minute and 30 second clip guys that we're going to put up here. You won't be able to hear us, but just watch and kind of see what happened the last time we got together. Let's make fun of Brian. He's, I don't think he gets made fun of ever. I think they taste pretty good. He has a bar bag. A bar. <laughs> oh, man. That was a Wait, you never had them at all? So, so Brad says that I do get made, made fun of because I am the Gerber baby grown up. But you may notice I'm starting oh. to grow it back. So the Gerber mm. baby is going away. I think Brian's stalling the sardine eating. I think he's stalling. Yeah, really. He's never had a sardine before. And I know, Brian, I think you have. Before. Oh, Brian. Oh, you got to eat it anyway. <laughs> Slippery little bugger. Put it in your mouth. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You have to actually swallow it. That's what she said. Okay, Greg, stop it, Nicole. <laughs> Greg likes it. Yeah, but Brian's is bigger. Looks <laughs> 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 like I'm back. Do you smell better? I, yeah, I've got know. wet naps for the computer area. I turned the fan on. I got air freshener that just went all over me. That smells worse than the fish, that stuff. No. Ooh. <laughs> cranberry tart. Oh, how so did now you I got sardines mixed with cranberry. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it still smells in there, Brian. <laughs> That's what she said. We are back live now. <laughs> In case you're wondering. <clears throat> oh, that was that was a memorable show. That was awfully funny, I must say. <laughs> I love the way you guys compiled that like that. That was pretty stellar. Brian threw that together. It's pretty awesome for awesome. sure. <laughs> Making me hungry with all the sardines. <laughs> I still laugh at it every time I see it too. It's <laughs> oh. How's your keyboard, Greg? Didn't you get some of the sardine juice on your keyboard? Yeah, there's some oil still on there. Oh, right? that's so gross. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, it hurts. I'm laughing so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, when the four of us get together, it can go off the rails sometimes. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun anyways. <laughs> Even Gail's yeah. laughing about the replays on that. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of fun, though. So I thought you were going to make fun of me because the Eagles just tanked the last half of the season. Yeah, they. Uh, yeah, I don't know what happened to them. They really uh, blew it because they were – 
early on and they're like 10 and one and everybody's saying, Oh, they're going to be in the super bowl. And yeah, they tanked. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So Nicole, why don't I should say coach Nicole, why don't you tell us a little bit, you know, in case we have some viewers that aren't familiar with you, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, your talk a little bit about, you know, your success stories, um, you know, everything that, you know, has been working for you. And then you can talk a little bit about your channel as well. Um, you know, a little bit later or however you want to do it, but why don't you go ahead and I want to give you the big stage. <gasps> no. <laughs> <laughs> um what's up guys what's up friends (laughs) um i'm coach nicole uh otherwise known as former fat girl um so i I don't want to go through my whole story because it's a whole lifetime but just know at my heaviest i was about two 200 pounds at five feet short um sleep apnea chronic inflammation digestive issues um, anxiety, depression, all the things, um, about, I'm coming up on my year anniversary, actually in a couple, in a month or two, but, um, I got certified in, uh, nutrition, educated nutrition, um, in 2020 when I was furloughed from the federal government and I lost about 50 pounds during my furlough period. Cause I was a, a professional athlete, meaning I was still getting paid to work full time, but not working. Um, so <laughs> So I, I uh, worked out like a mad woman, got educated, um, went vegan for four years, <laughs> just ended that in 2021, actually. So just recently. Um, but even vegan didn't solve everything. Uh, losing the 50 pounds obviously helped with my with my um, inflammation and all that stuff in my lower body. But I still wasn't feeling great. So the beginning of last year, 2023, I've always known about keto, low carb, all that stuff, obviously, because I'm formally trained, but we were told emergency backup system, you know, all that nonsense. So I stumbled across Bart K first and I binge watched his entire channel in, in a week. I literally watched his entire channel. And then Judy Cho um, was next because they were in my space. So I resonated with them a bit more. Um, and I like how they explain things, kind of dumb it down. But um, what they were saying made sense. And that's what I was taught in college and in my training. So I was like, what the hell? I'll give it a shot for 30 days. What do I have to lose? <laughs> and here I am almost almost a year later. But yeah, I no longer have sleep apnea. Um, I didn't get a sleep study to actually get undiagnosed. But my husband's sleeping in the same room now every day. So whenever I wake up and he's next to me, I guess I'm good. Um <laughs> my anxiety and depression are gone. Um, my inflammation was my knee. I had multiple knee surgeries, uh, reconstructive. I was close on needing an actual replacement and all that good stuff. Um, so the doctor said I would never function like a normal human being, not in those words, but, um, I can't do, you know, weight bearing exercises, isolation movements. Um, I would have to deal with the chronic itis, bursitis, arthritis, tendonitis, all those things. The rest of my life, essentially I would need a replacement when I get older. There's nothing you can do. Just deal with the discomfort. I can go up and down stairs now without com- uh, discomfort. I can function like a normal human being. I can kneel without pain. Um, so the doctors lied um, and digestive issues, of course, saw themselves um, total. I lost about 70 pounds. I still have a little bit more to go. I'm not quite at my goal weight. I have about one more pant size to drop, but yeah. So I'm coming up on my year anniversary and I'm hoping by, by spring, I will be at my, at my goal composition or, or, or close to it. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Awesome. Well, it sounds like you've overcome quite a bit and done really well. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) David said he got educated, then went vegan. No, I went vegan first, then got educated. (laughs) (laughs) So what the health made me turn vegan in 2017? And I was vegan for four years. So I didn't get educated until... Ah, I was probably ending, I was probably ending vegan as I was, as I was uh, transitioning to my certification. Um, But I was very much lean and green though. Uh, Even before vegan, even after vegan until I went to low carb, I was very chicken breast, uh, turkey bacon, 
I didn't eat beef. I didn't eat red meat. I didn't eat, you know, regular bacon because that stuff will kill you. So, so I was very lean and green, um, even before and after my vegan stint. Um, so now I primarily eat hamburger patties, Italian meatballs and, and beef. That's pretty much all I eat and eggs. No, that's, that's, uh, that's awesome. I know, uh, our topic tonight is incorporating an exercise plan while being on a low carb diet. And I know you can bring some expertise to this. What would you have to say about that? What would you like to tell people about that? That's a broad topic. <laughs> it is a little bit broad. Yep. Definitely. <laughs> Um, We're I, each actually going to answer this, so I'll let we'll let you okay. have the floor first. Since I'm big, I guess I'll start. This is the <laughs> only instance I will ever be big in my entire life. Um, so shut up, Brian. <laughs> so, um, I guess I will piggyback off Erin uh, about the women and and weight weight training. So I made a comment on one of the live streams I was on, uh, I believe, last week, and I I brought this topic up that there's a lot of influencers who actually suggest women, especially um, menopause, postmenopause, you know, in that age range. So above 40 and above, you know, essentially mine and Erin's age range um, to limit, don't do high intensity, you know, do yoga and Pilates and, and do lightweight and all that stuff. Um, so that's, what's being promoted. Um, and when women are at the gym, I see more women doing cardio than anything else. Um, so I guess to piggyback off Erin, when you are of that age, 40 and above, um, even women, I would say especially women, because obviously we don't have as much, you know, lean muscle mass as men. So we carry around naturally more body fat. So it's, it's, I, I would say, a bit more important for women because women aren't known to strength train and we do naturally have less lean, lean muscle mass. So as you age, you know, sarcopenia, the loss of lean muscle mass is a thing. Um, you have other things that happen. Um, but I think it's more important to strength train when you are other in general for metabolic health in general, it's more, you know, muscle is more metabolic than anything. But I think when you're of that, as you age, as you get above 40, I think it's more important to slow the progression and to age strong and healthy vice weak and frail, which our current older population, they're, they're aging weak and frail. Fall deaths are, are seriously a, an epidemic right now. It's a huge thing. Hip replacements, um, breaking bones, um, not being able to support their own weight. Um, so it's, it's a huge issue. So I'd say for my ladies out there, no matter how old you are, like, like Aaron said, you are not going to be, you know, the Hulk. Um, if you, if you, uh, if you lift weights, I think it's very important to lift weights and weight training is considered cardiovascular training as well. It is cardio. You are jacking your heart rate up. You are burning calories. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm training for powerlifting, my first powerlifting meet uh, for spring of 2025. This is my second week. So I'm powerlifting. I'm lifting heavy things, picking them up and putting them down. And I certainly don't look like the Hulk. <laughs> but <laughs> but that's that's pretty much it. Cardio is good. I'm not knocking cardio. Definitely, definitely do that. But but I say weight train first. And if you are going to do cardio, make sure you are incorporating some sort of strength training um, because I've never seen or it's very few and far between to have marathon runners who aren't extremely skinny like a stick. And that's because the vast majority of them aren't doing a lot of weight training. All they're doing is running. So you definitely want to support your health, your bone health, your muscle health, your metabolic health. And weight training is the best, best thing you could do for all three of those areas. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. Aaron, I think we're going to let you answer that question, uh, incorporating an exercise uh, plan while being on a low carb diet. We'll go ahead and throw you on the spot yes. for a while. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. I don't know. I think I pretty much. Thank you. <laughs> I think that I pretty much said it before. Um, 
I, I don't know. I've been doing, I've been doing, started strength training about six months ago. I started my lo- gluten-free and low carb eight months ago, but started strength training two months into it. And that just started out with basically a squat routine that I found on YouTube. And then a few weeks later, I said, I got to work upper body too. So I started with little tiny dumbbells because I had shoulder problems and neck problems. And that's all I could do. But um, to the ladies out there, especially don't be afraid to start light. Like, I mean, there were some where I was just going through the motions because I didn't have the strength to, to do the weight without it, like, like tweaking a little. Um, but you would, you, you'd be surprised at how quickly you can build that up. Like in a week or so, you're going to be lifting heavier weights and it's just, um, you know, the changes it makes to what you can eat and everything. And, um, like I said before, your metabolism, um, I know there might be some concerns, Nicole can probably answer this better, but I see stuff that says, oh, how could you build muscle or how could you do this stuff without carbs and and things of that nature? Um, I feel like I see that a lot. So that's Nicole, why don't you just touch on that briefly? Um, Because I know some people think, oh, you can't eat low carb or keto and and do weightlifting or anything high intensity for that matter. Um, I have a question first. Why was Aaron taken off the big screen early? What? <laughs> was that a premature exit? Well, I can put her back. <laughs> okay. Premature exit. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. So I think the the big misconception is the confusion of words. A lot of I think what happened is out in mainstream. And even in my even in my uh, nutrition education, and Erin's going through it now, so I don't I don't know if you got to that part, but um, a lot every most of the things you see online is carbs are your body's primary fuel source. That's what you see, right? Yeah. The thing is, the truth behind that is a mixing of words, but words matter. It's not the primary. It's it's the prior. Your body prioritizes carbs. There's a difference there. It's not preferred and it's not our primary fuel source. It's our body prioritizes it, one, because it's quick energy. And two, your your bloodstream can only handle about a uh, half to one teaspoon at a time. The rest of it gets stored as glycogen in your muscle or liver. And then the excess, of course, gets stored as fat. But your body works to to get rid of it and put it somewhere because excess glucose is toxic to to the human body. Um, it can only handle so much at one time. And if you're constantly shoveling carbs down your throat, you're gonna bust. You're gonna bust the storage limit. You're gonna bust what your bloodstream can handle at one time because it's very minimal. Um, and then your body has to work to put it some to figure out where to put it to figure out where it goes. That's the difference. So it's not primary. It's not preferred. It's just prioritized because your body needs to work to figure out what to do with it and where to go and get rid of it. When it comes to fat, you you have more sustained fuel, right? So fat and protein go hand in hand. Um, we all know the importance of protein with you know muscle and, and all that stuff. But if you don't have carbs, if you're not eating exogenous carbohydrates, exogenous glucose, your body is going to run very smoothly on, on ketones, on fat. You're going to be fat adapted. And that's what's going to sustain you. That's longer lasting energy and what your body actually prefers. So I've actually put clients who are um, who do century rides, like bike um, 100 plus miles. I transitioned them to low carb. So they were still eating minimal carb. But they wouldn't have to do intra-race fuel as often because it's more sustained energy. Um, so that's a that's a very false fallacy. I think where a lot of uh, another reason a lot of people fall off is because they don't give their body enough time to transition. They're either a transitioning too quickly, and the side effects they can't get through the side effects, and or two they they aren't giving it enough time. So it's going to take months for your body to unjack itself up with the inflammation and the metabolic damage you have. So you can't expect to go from quick fuel um, and easy energy 
to now, you know, becoming trying to be fat adapted and that happened overnight. I think that's where a lot of people become impatient and say, well, this isn't working. And then they start adding carbs back in. It's you have to give your body time to one, adjust and to recover and repair from all the damage that's been done to it through all the years. Once all that happens, you should notice a drastic difference in the gym when it comes to strength, how long your strength, your, your training is able to last without having, without becoming depleted. Um, you should notice, and, and you should have more strength for longer. Um, so you should be able to sustain longer weight training sessions vice when you are on a carb diet, uh, a high carb diet, because you're going to deplete your energy a lot faster by running on carbs, vice fat. Um, so that's like the, the short and, and sweet version of my opinion. Um, on the matter and some of the, th and some of the things I've worked with my clients on who, who are athletes. Yeah. Awesome. You know, what's another interesting thing when you're, when you're talking about that is, um, and it's no secret that I, that I'm low carb, I'm not keto. So I do eat a certain amount of carbs, but, um, even eating low carb, I notice that there's very minimal, um, problems with recovery after working out even heavy. Um, I don't have like that muscle soreness and stuff that I would have had years ago, you know, the day after or two days after or whatever. So that's something to um, take into account too, for sure. Sorry, guys, just wanted to share a few of the comments up here. <clears throat> Great job, Brad and his wife losing 90 pounds, doing a low carb diet. That's awesome. Damn. For six months, they've been at that goal weight. So awesome. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're not. <laughs> if you do, you should record yourself riding, Susan. <laughs> it's like on skis or something. <laughs> Dude, I, I have a couple questions come in here. Um, the champion within said, how should older women warm up prior to lifting weights? We swing around our walkers, you know? I mean, yeah. No. Getting out um, of bed to warm up. <laughs> no. Seriously, you know what I what uh, my coach said anyway is just enough, just warm up enough doing whatever it takes to just essentially get warm and get those muscles moving is basically what she said. I mean, um, I just kind of like, I'll still be wearing my sweatshirt or whatever, but I just kind of like move around in place or if it's a lower body, um, move my legs or kind of go through kind of the motions I'm going to be doing with the weights, but without the weights. Does that make sense? Like just for about five minutes, just to warm up, not like serious cardio or treadmill running or anything like that. Um, yeah, I believe she even said that she sometimes like will get in the sauna real quick just to warm her body up. And then, you know, so you're really just trying to warm up so that your muscles are not essentially, that's not very scientific, but you know what I mean. Nicole, you, tell us the scientific version. <laughs> so, so, so you say I, more eloquent, eloquent me than that? You know what I mean. I'm just like, so whatever. So men and women, the same, right? So <laughs> um, men and women shouldn't warm up differently. It's, uh, you know, weight training is weight training. Um, it doesn't matter gender. So I'll just speak generally. Um, uh, there are people who, who make, you know, half their workout, the warm up. Um, I don't do that personally, right? Greg does that. So yeah, I'm curious what Greg does. So for me, I'll just use today for instance, uh, I'll just go through what I did today for my workout. So today I did, um, bench, um, and I did percentages of my maxes. Again, I'm training for powerlifting. So I train a little differently, but I did bench and I did, um, deadlift. So on both of those movements or compound movements for the bench, all I do before I lift as part of my warm up is I work up to my working set. So I'll do, you know, I'll lift just the bar, which is 45 pounds. So I'll lift just the bar just to warm up the muscles, my lats and chest that's going to be pushing the bar. Um, and then I'll add a little bit of weight on there. Um, so I'll work up to my working set and then I'll start working out. I do that for all of my lifts. So that's how I warm up is I just do working sets, um, to work up to my, um, actual 
you know, weight that I'm going to be lifting. That's how I do it. So I, I make it part of my actual workout vice doing something separately. Um, there are times I do my physical therapy exercises, but again, I'm injured my lower body. So, so I'll do those exercises, but out depending on what my workout is. But besides that, my, my working sets of whatever movement I'm doing, that is my, that is my warm up. So that's just part of my workout. Awesome. What do you and do, I'm, Greg? Yeah. What What's that? Do? What do you do? <laughs> what do I do for warm ups? Yeah. <laughs> I think for me, just moving around is a big deal because yeah. um, as I've dealt with arthritis, I just, you know, once I get out of bed, I'm really stiff in the morning. I just you have go, to move my body. <laughs> my every <laughs> part of my body is when I woke up and stepped out of bed. So I get it. <laughs> yep. A hot shower makes yeah. a big difference hot for shower, me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it yeah. does just helps to get moving around and then I get limbered up pretty quick today. I was really sore for whatever reason though. Not sure if it's the weather. I don't know if it's because it was a full moon today. I don't know what it is, but today my body really hurts. Yeah. Yeah. And it hasn't been that way. So it's kind of weird today, but who knows? What about, what about you, you, Brian? Yeah. Well, I agree with um, coach Nicole. I'm doing, <laughs> I'm doing the exercise that you're about to do at a lower weight, you know, less rep type thing, just to warm yourself up. Um, what I do want to say, and I'm glad nobody has said this, but don't do static stretching. Yes. Don't do static stretching before your workout. That's like an old way of telling people to do things. And it's totally incorrect. Um, so if you're not going to even do like the so like, let's say you're about to do bench presses, you know, do a smaller amount of weight on the bench press and just a few reps of it to get going. If, but if you're not going to even do that, at least do something dynamic, like, you know, maybe do a little bit of high intensity interval or something for a few minutes or something just to get the heart rate going and that kind of stuff. Um, but the, yeah, that's what I would do is just the um, start with a lower weight of whatever exercise you're about to do and, and ease yourself into it. Brian, can you, can you define static stretching? Renee, Renee <laughs> yeah. was um, asking for a friend. Yeah. So, so, okay. I, let, let me explain this a little bit. I, I used to be a youth football coach and it used to drive me nuts because all of these other coaches at the beginning of football practice had their kids lined up and doing these basically what we call it static stretching right so it's things like um touching your yeah, toes I was just there you that. go yeah so like yeah yeah touching your toes for like a count of 10 or something like that and yeah yeah um like like she was just doing this hold yeah. this for like a count of 10 or something sure. yeah so yep. i'm knocking my headset off but those are considered static stretches yeah. and um, that actually is counterproductive of the workout that you're about to do. So it's, it, that's not a good idea to do. All right, Brian, I wanted to give you an opportunity to answer this question. Um, we're going to put you on the big screen too. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm Brian. Oh, boy. <laughs> He's so, going into a shell. He's like, <laughs> Okay, guys. Um, wait, can I can I do Greg's voice that he does for the welcome? No, Greg has a lady voice. It's Coach Nicole. <laughs> okay. Um. Anyway, so all right, incorporating an exercise plan. So, the the first thing I'm gonna say is, if you're just going to low carb or whatever it is you're doing, and you're still have a lot of health related issues and really overweight and stuff concentrate on getting yourself healthy first and you're eating first don't worry about the exercise yet um you know get yourself healthy get get rid of some of that inflammation in your body and that kind of stuff before you go into the exercise plan so that's the first thing i would say but in terms of exercise plan I, i'm really big on um movements that are you know high intensity heavy weight that kind of stuff um i i'm not big at all on doing the um you know aerobic type of things you know your your regular cardio and that kind of stuff um yeah you know it, it probably 
does good for your heart and stuff, but um, so does the high intensity stuff, right? And that stuff is what's going to actually help to build the muscle and um, burn fat and so forth, right? Like if, if you're over there saying, you know what, I'm going to, um, I know that I can lift a lot more than this, but I'm just going to lift this and I'm going to do like 30 reps. That's really not building muscle. You're not really building muscle doing that because it's so easy for you to do it. You're already doing it, right? What is going to build the muscle is something that pushes you to your limit. And that's what you want to do. So that's the first thing I would kind of say is, you know, go into that. I would do that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, I mean, again, I it like when I first was getting into doing this um, carnivore, really, well, I started keto and then I went to carnivore, right? Um, at first, I didn't exercise at all just because I knew I was always sore and that kind of stuff. And I wanted to get my body healthy first. So that's that is really the key first. And then um, just remember, you can't out exercise a bad diet. So you got to be good and on plan with your diet. Once you have your diet in place, then the exercise is just like a big enhancement. It's going to help you in so many different ways. Uh, it's going to help to build the muscle, but it's also just going to help your heart in everything, you know, your, your mindset. Um, you're going to be a happier person from exercising and all that kind of stuff comes into play with it. So I hope that kind of explains my thoughts around it, sort of. Yeah. You can take me off the big screen now if you want. <laughs> I'll put myself on there. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. I guess I'll try to answer the question. Um, you know, <laughs> I'm not the smartest person in the room. <laughs> That's not a good lead in, Greg. Unless you're star. <laughs> what I would say is incorporating an exercise plan on a low carb diet. Well, now let me tell you this. This last year, I did not almost hardly any exercise. And there's a reason for that. Um, I can hardly get up from the couch. Um, I was in a lot of pain. I was hurting. And, you know, that's the thing. There's a lot of people in a lot of different positions in life. Um, you know, maybe they're, they're not very mobile. Um, you can still lose weight on a low carb diet without moving your body. Um, do I recommend that? No, if you can move your body, try to move your body. Even if it's just doing chair exercises, there's nothing wrong with that. You got to start somewhere. So I think it's important to, to put in whatever exercise you can, even if it's something little, and it will make a difference for you. Um, but it doesn't mean that you won't lose weight because I lost a lot of weight with doing minimal exercise. So um, don't get me wrong, though. I think if you can move your body, it's important to move it. It will make a difference for you. That's kind of my phase for this year. I'm definitely going to do more exercise. Um, you know, before I can hardly make it to the store. And now it's like, well, I can go to three stores and walk around and go home and not be hurting. Uh, so, you know, you got to look at your level that you're at and challenge yourself to move your body a little bit more. Um, that and with the proper diet, you you can lose weight and be very successful. So uh, let alone your other health issues. And the thing is, as you lose weight, some of the other health issues go away. Maybe you don't have so much inflammation. Um, you get a little more flexibility. Um, you know, all those things come into play. So, you know, if someone's sitting at home watching this and they're thinking, oh, I'll never be able to get up from the chair and do all this stuff. That's OK. Um, you can lose weight with the diet, but you know, if you can move your body a little more, um, you will make a difference in your life. And as you lose weight, you'll become a little bit more mobile and you'll be more active and you'll be able to do more things. So, you know, I didn't think I'd be, I, I didn't think I'd ever work again last January. I thought I was going to be disabled the rest of my life, not be able to work again. Well, come December, I work, I'm working a full-time job now. So, you know, it's one of those things that just because you were there before doesn't mean you will in the future. So, you know, you, you can make changes in your life. I just encourage you, you know, just start somewhere. Um, it takes some action and make changes and, and good things will happen to you. Yeah, all true. Brian and Aaron are up to something. <laughs> Pretty sure Nicole's involved too. <laughs> Probably. I was going to say, I know we did have one more question. We had a question come in. I'm going to go ahead and put that up and uh, we'll put it over here. Uh, the question is, started an exercise strength chair and uh, 
is it ballot exercise? Should ballot. I use res my resistance bands or get some dumbbells or kettlebells? Mm -hmm. Also, how many times per week postmenopausal? Good question for for everybody. So, what do you guys think? Start with you, uh, Nicole. Well, Susan, that is awesome. Any exercise is good exercise. I am a big fan of just getting out and walking. Um, but yeah, when it comes to when it comes to exercise, resistance bands are great. It's you you want to put your muscles under tension, um, right? Um, so that that's good. Um, dumbbells, kettlebells, all those options are great. Whatever. If you are going to do home workouts, if you don't have a gym membership and you plan to work out at home, it's whatever you have. Um, you can get gallon water jugs and use water jugs. You can, it's a stack of books. So you really don't need weights per se. You can use things, uh, around the house. That's what a lot of people did during the pandemic. I saw a lot of people using water jugs, a lot of people stacking books and just lifting whatever it is they had at home but yeah resistance bands are great uh, minimal impact dumbbells are great if i had to choose between dumbbells or kettlebells i know jonathan carnivore muscle doesn't agree with me with kettlebells but coach bronson does i think kettlebells are so much more versatile than dumbbells um <laughs> because because you can do more exercises with them you can do you can just do more and i'm not talking about the crazy kettlebell swings you know that That's what i'm thinking we, we yeah. had this I'm recently. saying you can do a lot of the compound movements with kettlebells. You can do deadlifts easier with kettlebells. You can do um, shoulder presses. You can you can do bicep curls. There's so much more you can do easier with the kettlebell than the dumbbell. So if you are choosing one or the other, if you don't have a dumbbell or a kettlebell yet, if it were me, I would get the kettlebell over the dumbbell. Um, but resistance bands are great as well, as well as whatever you can find in the home. Um, you can vary your push-ups to work different areas of your muscles. Um, so, so there's so many things you can do that doesn't involve weight, um, like actual having weights in the house, um, to work different muscle groups or to work your muscle groups differently. It's all about positioning. Um, so that's my, that's pretty much what I, what I think about that. And when it comes to postmenopause, the same would apply over 40, I think, I think we should all incorporate some sort of strength training, especially in that age group, um, just because of the the changes that are that we're going through. We we want we don't want them to speed up. We want them to slow down. So, so if you are postmenopausal, strength training is, in my opinion, more more important. Yep. Champion within says adding resistance training to a low carb diet will absolutely level up your life. Definitely. Yep. yep. Brad said there's a little background giggles going on when he's talking about you guys. <laughs> we were talking about doing chair flash dance, Aaron and I. <laughs> Not on the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of flash dance, even though this has nothing to do with flash dance. Um, when when you are post I know. When you are postmenopause, the, the the last thing I want to say is it's it is easier. Flash dance. <laughs> <laughs> it is easier for women Sorry. a lot of, a lot of doctors and i don't like this say menopause weight or whatever or or whatever like if you are in menopause or postmenopause, it is easier for women to gain weight just because of you know our hormonal changes that happen as we age so some doctors i've heard say oh that's just menopause weight that's natural that's normal whatever it's not <laughs> so so i will say when you are of that age for women uh you, you being carnivore or low carb sh should help and you shouldn't have to think about this as hard um but it is easier for women to gain weight and it is harder, unfortunately, for, for us to lose weight when we are of that age just because of the changes our body's going through. Um, so that's just another thing to, to be mindful of. And adding a weight training will help with that because it's more metabolic. It'll it'll just speed speed up. I hate that phrase, but but it, it is more metabolic, so it will benefit you more. Um but I just wanted to I just wanted to say that just because we women do have an extra added level of complexity to that um, to the aging process. 
And to kind of expand on that too, what Nicole's saying is, and I learned this personally, that you have to make sure you're eating enough too. I see a lot of women on Instagram and they're sharing like, not to use calories, but they're sharing their calories. And I'm like, oh my God, you're eating how much? You're eating, you know, a thousand calories a day, 1100, like that's nothing. You know, they're eating like birds in my opinion. And, um, you know, some of the things that, that I was told was, okay, you're going to have to probably shouldn't be intermittent fasting anymore. Make sure you're eating because when you want to build that muscle, you're going to have to eat to, to build, you know, and that metabolism is going to eventually support that even if you have to slowly increase. But, um, but yeah, you, you got to eat, you can't be afraid to eat or it's just, it's not going to work out too well. So I don't know if Nicole can expand upon that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I I agree. Um that whole eat less move more thing needs to die. Um but if we are but if we are talking about uh weight even though I know exercise and I know not everyone is trying to lose weight, but I would say the vast majority of people who are coming to this lifestyle are trying to lose weight. Um myself included, I still have some weight to lose. Um I I've had this conversation quite a few times this week about people coming to this way of eating. And I'm only talking women because uh, I haven't talked to any men about this, but I'm sure there are men struggling as well um, who are either in a weight stall or are gaining weight with this way of eating, switching to a high fat diet. Um, and the, and the one thing I can say that's not specific to one individual person, cause I don't know you individually, I don't know your background. So just, this is just a blanket statement <laughs> as a starting point is one-to-one -one ratio, you know, protein to fat. And if you still are in a stall or you're still gaining and not losing, I would decrease your fat, increase your protein, keeping, keeping the mass the same. Um, and, and make adjustments from there. But that's what I would recommend adjusting. Cause there's a lot of people that say if you're, if you're uh, gaining weight or in a stall to increase your fat and then they gain more weight. Um, yeah. and there's, there's reasons behind my suggestion. I, you know, I don't want to get into all that now cause that's not what this stream is about, but I just want to make that blanket statement. I, I would recommend decreasing your fat increasing your protein if the one-to-one -one ratio does not work if you are still in a stall or still gaining weight that is the first adjustment i will try to make and then adjust from there yeah yeah i feel like the protein is is a game changer yeah you know for the women especially that that don't tend to eat as much <laughs> yeah yeah brad has a question what fat percentage do i need to, to, to get to Two for my six pack to show up. <laughs> I don't know. I have a six pack in my fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Just throw it over to Brad. <laughs> then we'll have a six pack. <laughs> what kind are you looking for? I got the low carb kind, Mick Ultra. <laughs> what do you oh, say, Brian? Who needs, who needs a six pack? We can have a whole keg. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea because I'm nowhere near a six pack. So I, I don't know what it takes. I don't know. The, the body fat percentage varies from person to person. That's very individual. Um, one, it depends on, I mean, how much body fat, uh, it depends on how much fat you have, but a lot, if you get to, if you get to like the low teens uh, for men and it's different for women because women shouldn't go that low <laughs> but for men <laughs> if you are in the if you are in about the teens um you should start to see abs I, I i would say it's not healthy metabolically to be super lean year round um you'll you'll notice a lot of you know bodybuilders or a lot of people who you know lean and bulk and do that whole yo-yoing thing for shows and and all that stuff um it's because they can't they feel like crap because being that lean is just not healthy your body goes into starvation mode and it thinks you're you're trying to kill it you need to feed your body um so it's not good to be lean year round it's good if you want to show your six pack and and you're you know in a good healthy body fat percentage but i don't think the goal should be to get to as lean as possible um to get shredded and be a, in a low a uh, fat percentage that doesn't kill you because you know being one to two percent is 
dangerous <laughs> and there are people who strive for that. So I don't think body fat percentage should be the goal. I think health should be the goal and how you feel. If you are, if you are losing weight, your body has a natural set point. So your body will tell you, and that's why people's weight loss stalls or starts to slow, the closer they get to that goal number, it's because the closer they get to that goal number is your, your body's homeostasis. That's its natural step point. Your body's happy and it, it fights you because depending on how low you want to go, your body doesn't want to go that low. Um, so I would listen to your body, but yeah, you can absolutely get abs in, in a decent body fat percentage without going dangerously super low, but that's very individual on what that looks like for you. Now, women, women should not go below the twenties in my opinion, because women need to have body fat. We have to, we cannot be lean and healthy. That's why a lot of people lose their periods and all that stuff. It is not healthy. So this advice is different for men and women. So I'm just speaking to men. <laughs> women is a whole different conversation, but for men, you can absolutely be in the, in the low twenties, teens and, and be healthy body fat, see your abs and not, and still have a good, strong metabolism because you're not dangerously low. Was that long winded enough? It's perfect. So in other words, you can look really good with a healthy body fat percentage without going to extremes. Yeah, that shouldn't be the goal. Men like, or women. Yeah. Yeah, that shouldn't I, I just don't think, you know, body fat percentage should be yeah. the goal. Um, because that's where a lot of people get in get in trouble because they go below women too, they go too low, especially women, they go too low because they have a number in mind. Um, and that number may not be <laughs> good for you and for, and for your body. That's why, that's why I don't like those metrics, uh, you know, those types of goals. Yep. Agreed. Yep. So Aaron, do you have any questions for coach Nicole at all? Or do you, Brian? I like to give you guys opportunities to ask her questions too. Well, now we have to ask because she's shaking her head. Nope. <laughs> what do you got, Brian? So, what's the temperature like where you're at? Because you're not very far from me. So We're I'm, in the I'm same curious. Area. <laughs> I'm curious. Was it was it like seventy there today? No, it was in the what was it? Fifth. Uh, hold on. It was sixty. No, yeah, it was sixty. Wow. Okay. Not too bad. Then. Yeah. yeah. Brian and I Great. still need to, to get to, to get together. We had a couple of dates, but he's been traveling. Things keep happening, but we're going to get the, yeah. we're going to get together in, in real life. One of these, one of these days, he's like less <laughs> than an hour. What are you less than an hour? Like maybe 45 minutes. Yeah. Probably about that. Yeah. 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 We need to um, coordinate some kind of a Virginia meetup thing too. So. Yeah. Aaron can drive. It's only about yeah, a three and a half hour. A little further, like Delaware, that's even better. <laughs> well, not that there's there's only like one place to meet in Delaware, but you know, other than that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the question, Brian. <laughs> yeah, <no problem. laughs> um, I have a question for Aaron. Uh oh. Yeah, go ahead. Do I have to answer it? <laughs> How's your training going? It's going really, really good. Like, um, just, I'm starting to lift heavier. I, I got. I'm at uh, nutrition I, training. Oh Your my studies. nutrition training! <laughs> I I am halfway through it, and um, doing well. I'm taking it slow. I'm not trying to rush through everything. I want to try to absorb it, so I'm doing a little at a time. And um, yeah, I'm finding it very very eye opening, very interesting. Um, it's nice to be able to learn some of the science behind the things that we kind of already know from, you know, doing what we're doing and whatnot. And um, yeah, so I'm hoping in another two months or whatever, I'll have that wrapped up and then I'll see where I go from there. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of getting interested in maybe doing like a, um, like a personal trainer type thing too, or something just so that I can kind of work all that together somehow. So we'll see, but yeah, I highly recommend it for anyone that's interested in, uh, in nutrition for sure. Sweet. Awesome. Nicole, I got a question for you. Are you doing some more powerlifting and stuff now? Did I see that right? Where'd she go? <laughs> she goes away. Game. <laughs> uh, powerlifting, yes. 
Um, so I just, I've always wanted to compete. Um, so I made it a goal to compete in my first meet before I turned 45. So I found a local, um, it's called USA powerlifting, Virginia. Um, and they have meets in two locations near me. Um, so I'm going to register with them, but I have to wait until January, uh, 2025 because your membership expires in a year. And I don't plan to compete until I think I saw March or April of 2025. So, I'm work right now. I'm working on building, rebuilding my strength because I haven't really lifted with a barbell in like over two years. <laughs> so my one rep max for deadlift was 215. Now I'm a little less than that. I'm probably between 175 and 200 right now, starting back up. And then my bench used to be 127. Now it's about 115 so i've lost a little bit of strength so right now i'm rebuilding my strength up mm -hmm. and then by the end of this year since coach bronson lives across the street from me i actually bumped into him today walking to the gym he was walking home from that was my first bronson sighting i was walking to the gym and he was walking <laughs> home and i literally we literally bumped into each other uh, that was funny but i might hit him up the end of the year he said he would um he'll work with me so it's convenient since we go to the same gym so i might have him work with me um the end of the year through the competition to help you know get me competition ready because you have to lift a certain way and there's certain cadences and stuff so i'm gonna work on strength form losing the rest of this body fat and then coach bronson's gonna get me across the finish line now, awesome. i have a question for that nicole what how does it work in that do you need to like qualify like, or are there different divisions or how does that work? And yeah, what it's based on age. So, um, okay. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be in the old ladies division No, but they have, um, it's based on, it's based on age. Um, and then you do, there are qualifiers. So I don't plan to qualify. I don't think I'm going to qualify. I'm not that, not this first time, but there are like nationals and, and those sorts of things. So if you, if I go to this meet and I happen to be strong and, you don't have to do all three lifts. So it's bench, deadlift, and back squat. I have a video coming out. You'll see how weak my squat is. It's because I have, you know, from my knee issues, I have hip and all sorts of issues in my lower body. So it's not as it's not as strong. Um, but you you don't have to compete in all three lifts. So I plan to just compete in deadlift and bench unless miraculously my back squat gets better. But if I do, if I blow the field out of the water for bench, for example because I am stronger than a lot of women in my upper body, then I could potentially qualify for nationals and, and all that stuff in that one lift. Um, so it'll be cool if that happens. Um, I, I, I don't know, but, but yeah, it's broken up in age category and then there's like novice intermediate and something else. So I'm doing, you know, my age and then um, novice for my, for my first one. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm not saying this to be funny or anything, but I have heard that shorter, I'm dead serious, shorter people can do this relatively easier because you have shorter, does that make sense? A shorter distance to push the weight? I have actually heard this. Is that true? I hate that because you can look at it different. You, can you look, look at it. Now. <laughs> yes. And but it's the same. You can... The thing is, is it could go both ways, right? So like if you have longer arms, you have more momentum pushing you up. So like True. when I did deadlifts today, it was on a, it was on the rack. So I pulled the bar from just below my knees up, right? So it was, I wouldn't say it was easier. It was actually a little bit harder because I didn't, if I pulled it from the floor, I would have more momentum picking it up. Yeah. So, I mean, you can look at it both ways. I've heard that too, like doing push-ups. Oh, Nicole, you could do so many push-ups because you have less, less room to go to the ground, whatever, but you can look at it both, both yeah. ways. So I, I don't know. I wouldn't say yeah. it's, it's And you easier. could also say if you're smaller, you have less weight to lift. So you could do push-ups easier too. No, because a I'm lifting. Okay. It's based off no. size. So like yeah. I'm lifting, so for instance, 212, I'm, you know, I'm lifting a certain percentage of my body weight. So if, if I'm able to lift 250 by next year, pull 250 wow. off the ground, that's more than a hundred pounds more than I weigh. I think that's more impressive than a woman who weighs 
you know, 175 pounds lifting 250. So, I mean, it's all based on percentages. So just because you're short or tall, whatever, doesn't mean anything's easier or harder. It's just based off ability and strength. So I can probably lift more than someone bigger than me, or, or I can lift less than someone smaller than me. So it's just, I I don't think height. I mean, if you're talking wall balls, like when you're actually going to a squat and throwing the ball, then yeah, I mean, that sucks. (laughs) But (laughs) but anything else, I I don't know. I, I don't think that's fair to say I have it easier just because I'm smaller because I'm smaller. I weigh less. So I should be able to, I should, I shouldn't be able to lift as much as I lift because if you look at it from that logic, you know what I mean? I see Brad's been eating the uh, sugar-free candy again. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I've seen women lift or just people lift super heavy and they pee. They pee themselves. Speaking of farts, even though that has nothing to do with a fart. (laughs) We'll be right back. Yep, that's okay. Hey, um, Nicole, I I just thought um, I wanted to mention this um, for our, especially our listeners that are maybe on a podcast. Uh, you can find Coach Nicole's channel on YouTube at Former Fat Girl. And if you want to mention any other channels that you have, Nicole, you can go ahead and do that right now. Um, uh, YouTube channels? Yeah, whether you have Instagram, uh, Facebook, a, a website, whatever oh. you want to. Oh, Yeah. Um, so yeah, so as, as Greg says, uh, I am at former, former fat girl. Uh, I do a lot of reaction videos. Um, or it's That's primarily what I, channel. Yeah. yeah, primarily what I do. Um, but it's, it's all in fun and education. Um, I do have uh, a nutrition coaching company, dark horse nutrition. So my website is dark horse dash nutrition.com. I am on IG. Don't ask me what my handle is. It's a bunch of underscores, like former underscore fat underscore girl. Is 80 it? or something <laughs> and then <laughs> and then uh yeah, yeah that's pretty much that's pretty much where i'm at i don't understand ig i just post random things i don't know what you're supposed to do <laughs> you're supposed to post random things cool you know it's true <laughs> that reminds me uh brian i know i why don't you go ahead and tell the audience where where you can be found? And I know you had something new and exciting that you uh, got going last week, or that maybe is earlier this week, and you can talk about that a little too. Hmm. Sure. So on YouTube, I can be found at Wickovore, or you can just type in Wicko's Carnivore, and it'll probably go to it as well. Um, Instagram, I, I don't remember Brian <laughs> Dotnowicki. I think Brian <laughs> Dotnowicki. That's it. Twitter at Coach Big Bry. You mean X? X, yes, X. whatever it is. You can't even search at Twitter anymore. Uh. Facebook with Ghost Carnivore. And the new thing, um, last week, I think I uh, rolled out a website and I have a website now, oh. WitGoesCarnivore.com. Whoa. So check that out. <laughs> It's still a work in progress, but um, I've got stuff up there and basically a lot of links to different YouTube stuff. So some of my playlists, you know, our low carb football party show that we had, the uh, low carb uh, lounge right now that we have, there's, there's links to that and, and just some other stuff. And then I'll be working on doing some more stuff with the site. So so yeah, that, that's, that's what I got going on. Cool. Awesome. How about you, yeah. Aaron? Um, so I have, I'm at Brewer Better, Brewer, Brewer, I'm, at, <laughs> I'm at Brewing Better Living on uh, YouTube, Instagram, Spotify, what's the other one? TikTok, and now Pinterest too, by the way, if you can do that stuff too, I just found out um, with the videos and whatnot. And I'm on X at the Low Carbist still. Um, and Nicole and I actually have a new thing that we're going to be doing Jersey girls unite about, um, what we're doing with our fitness and everything. So that should be fun. Is that going to be on a certain night or day? I mean, day or whatever. Are we doing Wednesday? Well, it's starting next Wednesday and then we'll take it from there. (laughs) Awesome. That's awesome to hear for sure. 
All right. That one was for you, Brad. <laughs> you guys, it's a side thing. Um, hey, I just wanted you guys to know I can be found at My Weight Loss Life on YouTube. You can find me on Instagram at my.weightloss.life. You can find me on Facebook at My Weight Loss Life. And uh, you can find me right here on Thursday nights <laughs> live. And, uh, at My Weight Loss Life. Yeah. So look me up. <laughs> I was also going to say we have a um, a show next week and Thursday night, obviously. And also we're going to do a little uh, low carb live on Monday night at 6 p.m. Uh, Easter Standard Time. We're just going to come on for an hour and have a little fun, me, Aaron and Brian. And, uh, you know, I think we're just going to chit chat about daily activity. We'll probably talk a little bit about the football games over the weekend, just current events, different things that that Aaron wants to talk about. <laughs> I, I, I wants to talk to about football. About football. <laughs> I think we just football. And talk about football. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So we'll be uh, looking forward to doing that too. So it should be. I think time. that'll be good. You can you can see. Um, Aaron can talk about the football game and who's who's making the free throws. <laughs> free throws. <laughs> Well, I was figuring Aaron could talk about the entertainment because, you know, Taylor Swift's going to probably be at the game. Um, I know there's, we could talk about the Super Bowl halftime show yes, coming up. I don't up. know nothing about that, people. Let me tell you. What? <laughs> well, there's your homework for the Taylor weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Go Niners. I see that in the comments. <laughs> Taylor Swift. I mean, I can get down with the Niners. They're they're gonna be Baltimore's gonna be tough to beat. I'm not a Baltimore fan, obviously, but they're gonna be tough to beat. Yeah, yeah it'll be, there should be some good games this weekend. I know Brian Brian's a big Detroit Lions fan. His his club is in the big big game, second to second biggest game. So for sure, it's been a crazy ride this year. Yeah. Yep, it's been fun. Hmm. All right. Let's see here, guys. Just uh, if anybody has any last uh, minute questions, make sure you get them in because we're going to be wrapping up the show here pretty quick. So if you have anything else, get it in now. <laughs> I have a question for you, Greg. Yeah. So in the intro, how do you get your voice to do that? It's so Greg with it's my, my uh, It's... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I better play it again. I think I think Nicole wants to hear it. Again. Yeah, we'll do it again. Let's give it up for Coach Nicole. <laughs> Greg has a voice changer, don't you? No, it's oh. editing software. So really? Yeah. Yep. Huh. So it's pretty cool. I can do a lot of different voices and uh yeah. I kind of put it have can to put it together it? obviously, but it's fun. Can you do the Yoda voice? I haven't seen that one on there yet. Mm. <laughs> when he has to talk backwards. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's it's kind of fun putting those together. I gotta be honest, it's a good time. So <laughs> but well, I just I wanna I'll uh do the round of whatever last things you want to say. And Coach Nicole, we'll start with you. Do you have any parting words or anything you want to say? No, thanks all for having me on. It's always fun hanging with you guys. Uh, Brian, I'll text you after. We'll, we'll make something happen now that the snow's gone. Um, but no, this was totally, this was totally fun. Um, I do have some awesome collaborations coming up. Um, I'm talking to Coach Steven again about uh, – the mechanisms behind diabetes and taking a deep dive into uh, diabetes specifically. And then I'll be talking to um, Allison about uh, disordered eating and emotional eating on Monday. So a lot of interesting and, and different topics. And then of course, Aaron, we're going to be talking about weightlifting and strength training. So yeah, I'm excited to talk about different, different topics than just um, beef. <laughs> <laughs> True. I agree. Yep. How about you, Brian? Um, well, Nicole, thank you for coming on the show tonight. And um, I don't know what else to say because I didn't plan anything at all in this <laughs> family right now. And I, I, I don't know. So, yeah. Good job, everybody. 
<laughs> How about you, Aaron? I just want to know when the uh, hot flash chance challenge is going to be. <laughs> that sounds like a new challenge. <laughs> <laughs> we could have it involve sardines, and then everybody will be happy, right? But. <laughs> I mean, I was down to have a dance party tonight, but yeah, I think we should have a separate a separate stream. I can moonwalk in the chair. <laughs> You're gonna break dance too? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, am I the only one that used to love watching those movies in the eighties? <laughs> I was watching um break the Soul Train this morning, the old Soul Train videos. <laughs> Oh, would you watch that online? I YouTube. was like, Where yeah, it? yeah, <laughs> awesome, <laughs> Bruce. To answer your question, I think it may be an AI voice, it's built into the program though, so I could just change it to whatever. So, I mean, I record it and then it takes it and shifts the voice to, to what whatever program? I want it to be, I guess you could say. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I play around with it, it's kind of fun. It you know, it adds that extra personality to the show. So Greg, stop being yeah. so secretive. What's it? What's the program? I'm not. Hey, you gotta, you gotta message me, and, and there's fees involved. And what? <laughs> Nicole, you can do the same thing on. Great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can't give away my trade secrets. <laughs> I used to make my dogs talk in all sorts of masculine and feminine voices, and whatever on there. So, including that voice that he uses. <laughs> it's his little assistant, Gregette. <laughs> <laughs> that voice name is Jesse, by the way. <laughs> yes. Yes. <Yep>. <laughs> but well, I just want to thank all the viewers and listeners out there mm -hmm. for tuning in. This is a lot of fun. It was a good show. And thank you, Coach Nicole, for coming on and, and putting up with us. Uh, it was a good time. And of course, uh, Brian, thank you, buddy. Appreciate you doing the show. And Aaron, we like having you with us on this show. Um, it's just been a lot of fun and we got a lot of great viewers and people that tune in and can't thank you enough to, and let alone all the channel members that we have. Um, thank you very much. And yeah, I don't really have anything else guys. So I think it's about time to say goodbye for the evening. So let's see if we got any more comments coming in here. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> all right, guys, we will see you again soon. Take care. Thanks for coming. Please drive home safely.